All right, guys, remember this. It's all about the mechanics. When you release the dice, it's a done deal. There's nothing you can do about it. The numbers that appear uh, may be favorable, may be unfavorable. But once you release the dice to the best of your ability, you've done your job. Here goes. All right, point is eight. Six. Hard six loses, so what I'm going to do is just collect 30 instead of 35, and I'm going to press the six up to 60. That would be a six. Lose the hard six again. Okay, it pays one pay seventy, so I'm gonna take it up to one twenty. And I'm putting the hard six back up. Nickel in the rack. All right, that's a three. It was a little bit wild, but uh, nevertheless, it's a three. Oh, that was very wild. Eleven. Ten. All right. The ten is gonna pay fifty. Cause so I'm not doing a vig. I'm gonna press it to seventy-five. That would be a five. Five pays thirty-five is going to sixty.
It would be a beautiful 7 out. Beautiful toss by every soap. All you can do, guys, is release them to the best of your ability. Hey, we're hoping for the best. Back on the pass line, 25. Got a hard 10. That would be a nine, page thirty five. It's going to six. All right, the hard four loses. And the place better for page 50. We're going to press it to 75. And I'm going to put the hard four right back up for a nickel. Lose a hard four again. Place better four pays 150. So it's going to 225. Hard four, back up. All right, that's our first five. It pays 35, it's going to 60. All right, that's our first nine. It pays 35. It's going to 60. And guys, let me say this. First of all, uh, this is a ridiculous way to play. To just keep pressing. It's just for entertainment purposes only. Uh, my advice would, not even, would be to not even bet Grave Digger, period. Uh, I don't even think you can beat it with one hitting down or 
two hits and down or one hit and regress or whatever, it's unbeatable. Uh, you can't take a bunch of negative numbers, add them together, and get a positive result. Uh, not with influence being so fleeting uh, and so marginal. It would be a three. Now, if dice influencing or control tossing, whatever you want to call it, if it was more powerful than what the uh, practitioners uh, deem it to be, that'd be a different story. See what I mean? Seven out. Seven's coming. You can't stop it. And you never know when it's coming. That's the problem. You never know when. And uh, with uh, influence being what it is, it's pretty hard to uh, prolong it for long periods of time. Uh, once again, that seven's coming. Like Waylon always says, it's coming. <laughs> and you just don't know when. And believe you me, you will get on a run sometimes. You'll get on a run where, hell, you might toss 20, 30 times and never see the 7. But eventually, uh, the law of large numbers is going to prevail. So that's just what it is. All right, let's have some fun again. <laughs> you know what it is, Grave Digger. And guys, look at my rack. My rack is steadily dwindling down. You know why? It's because you can't beat it. Now, a lot of people would say, oh, well, you know, you should have, you know, uh, regressed or only uh, press once or don't matter. <laughs> don't matter if you regress, press, take your money down. Uh, sooner or later, what I'm trying to explain to people is that the short roll is going to catch you eventually and it does not matter how many hits that you've accumulated with your place bets because they're all going to be wiped out why because you're betting six numbers all at once out of the gate each and every time and each bet carries a negative expectation <laughs> where you're getting paid less than true odds you know a lot of people don't even realize that for every 30 dollar bet <laughs> uh casinos is grinding three dollars if you're getting paid on a five and nine for a thirty dollar bet, forty two dollars, which I understand in Mississippi or some shit, uh, uh, they pay what uh, uh, forty uh, automatic buy or something. But for the venues where you're only getting paid forty two dollars instead of the correct payment, the correct odds would be forty five dollars. For every thirty dollar bet, casino is taking three dollars. Think about that. You win 30 bets in a row, guess what? <laughs> You're giving them 90 bucks. Why? Because the correct odds on a $30 bet is $45. The, the correct payment, I should say, is $45. They're paying you $42. You're losing $3 per hit. And guess what? <laughs> when you don't hit, guess what happens then? That's right. <laughs> they take it all. I can hear it now. Some practitioners say, oh, well, screw the math. <laughs> yeah, right. Screw the math. Uh, yeah, screw the math because uh, wh why are you practicing tossing dice if, if you're going to worry about the math? Really? <laughs> I mean, some of the shit that you hear, man, is just the epitome of stupidity. How in that shit can you...
possibly. All right. Well, that should have been proper. I didn't pay it, put it. Uh, should have been 30. I run in my mouth. Uh, 70 total. How can you uh, possibly. Uh, <laughs> You know what? I'm not even going to speak on it because, like I say, some things are just uh, obvious to even the most mundane observer. So uh, I'll let you guys ponder that. Well, yeah, yeah know what that was yep it surely was it was a errant toss what is an errant toss that's when the dice slip out of your hands for whatever particular reason and you could actually hear and see the results of that disastrous toss it's gonna happen guys and that's another thing too if you cannot release the dice the way that you want let's just say 95 percent of the time uh so now you're fighting another, another issue. You're already fighting the math. And then if you have errant tosses, that's another issue that you're fighting. So this is why I say, guys, you're not going to be grape digger out of the gate. Uh, all you guys that are uh, diehard practitioners that want to say screw the math. And, uh, you know, if you're going to worry about the math while you're practicing tossing dice, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what to tell you guys. Now, of course, all the schools and the gurus and all that shit, they, man, listen, they're going to tell you, oh, well, you know, you can get a seven rows ratio of seven, eight, nine, ten. I've heard some ridiculous shit like 12. Give me a freaking break. Yeah. You got a seven rows ratio of nine <laughs> and you're walking, <laughs> you're working at Walmart. Pushing shopping carts. Got another one for you. That was another bad toss. Uh, I read a comment where one guy said he have a uh, he averages about fifteen rows a hand. He averages fifteen rows. <laughs> oh my God! Ridiculous. All right, we lose a heart eight. Lose a heart eight. I don't think anyone. Okay, heart six comes down. Uh, I don't think anyone uh, has a seven rows ratio long term above. <laughs> you ready? Drum roll. Get ready for it. Six point five. And that's for elite shooters, which I'm not. Uh, that's probably for the very best shooters. I would say maybe somebody like Howard. Uh, yeah, that's right. You heard it. 6.5 long term, maybe. I think most of the experienced uh, skill shooters hover around 6.2 to 6.3. And this is why you see nobody's playing professionally and all that. No, oh, yeah, you're always going to hear this shit. Up. Oh, I know somebody. Yeah, you're wrong. Uh, Bob plays professionally. Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> Bob just has a lot of disposable income that he's thrown at the casinos uh, that uh, when he loses, you just don't hear about it. Nobody is playing craps solely for a living. It ain't happening, guys. Uh, with a betting strategy, with dice influencing, don't matter. Nobody is playing craps professionally. Yes, people are trying to 
make sad money playing craps. But so far as being a craps professional, no. They are experienced crap players. Professionals, they don't exist, guys. All right, that would be an 11. That'd be a frontline winner. And I tell you what, uh, this video is going to conclude real soon. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, I feel my toss starting to uh, starting to come out like wounded ducks. When that happens, your time's up. You have reached your threshold. All right, that would be a four. So let's take the four, put it here. Let's light it up here. And like I said, guys, I know it's going to be a lot of people that's going to come out to work and say, oh, my friend does this. And I know for a fact that he's a uh, he plays for a living and all this bullshit. But like I said, what I like to see is a day where someone follows one of these uh, uh, guys with seven rows ratio of. Uh, what, 8, 9, 10, and all this shit, averaging 15 hands, uh, 15 rows per hand. And what I like to do is have a camera person follow that individual around for each and every session. And what you'll see <laughs> is severe losses in the long term. That's the eights, five, three, eight. Now, don't get me wrong. Casinos, they love practice shooters. Why? <laughs> Guess. All right, I'm going to uh, press it to 60. It paid 35. I put the, uh, I just took 30 and put the, uh, put the heart eight back up. Uh, the reason that uh, most uh, casinos love practice shooters is because most of them, they can't do it. They think they can influence the dice, but they just cannot. I used to fit in that category. Well, I thought that I was one of the best shooters. And then reality struck. And my bankroll disappeared with reality. So, all right, uh, six is going to pay 35, but I'm going to put the hard six back up. And I'm pressing it to uh, 60. Uh, yeah, so reality struck, and uh, I, I realized that, hey, this shit ain't as powerful as people uh, purport it to be. Don't get me wrong, I'm a diehard practitioner, but I'm also a diehard uh, practical person. See a uh, person of uh, practicalities. That was a, another uh, blockbuster, horrible toss, horrible release. They're gonna happen, guys. That's just what it is. And this is one of the main reasons too. Uh, that I don't think that a person has a seven rows ratio of nine, ten, and eight, and seven, and all that. And the reason being is I don't think that any there's anyone alive that can release the dice exactly as they want each and every time. Now I'm not saying numerically speaking. I'm I'm talking about in terms of mechanics. It ain't gonna happen. Uh, I think you have people that have very good releases that are very consistent, but to have uh, less than two percent errant tosses, you know, with a dice slip out your hands of for whatever reason that shit ain't happening it, it's gonna happen to each and every uh practice shooter and that's a fact all right we lose the heart eight again so what i'm gonna do it pays one 
I'm sorry, uh, page 70. All right, so what I'm going to do is just collect 65, and the heart eights back up, and I am pressing this to 120, putting the nickel in the rack. All right, so the heart eight is back up. Place bed of eight has been pressed to 120, and I'll put a nickel in the rack. Here we go. That's a three. Man, I can remember <laughs> back in the day some very heated arguments uh, on these uh, crap sites and craps forms. Uh, I should say craps platforms uh, because of uh, disagreements. And the disagreements was always the uh, diehard uh, uh, practice shooters versus the practical practice shooters. Uh, the diehards always wanted to say, oh, they had seven rows ratio of 9, 10, 12. They're killing the casinos, blah, blah, blah. And then you get the more practical uh, <laughs> practice shoes that say, well, hey, uh, I don't think that's so. And that's where the arguments always began. One side trying to be King Kong. The other side trying to say, hey, it don't work that way. Uh, you know, you're just a, a, a mere mortal. <laughs> All right, man, I, this damn hard six is killing me, ain't it? <laughs> I ain't hit a hard six yet, but I've lost on, what, three or four of them. All right, so uh, it hits again. Uh, it's at 60, so it's going to pay 70. So we're just going to collect 65 again instead of 70 because we're putting it back up. And we are pressing it to 120 and putting the odd nickel in the pickle. Here we go. And like I said, when you look at slow motion video, it is a starting, startling revelation. <laughs> when you see the damn dice twist and turn and all that, this is why I say, guys, you have to understand that it's all about energy. Uh, the correct application uh, of the energy. That's what it's all about. Because like I said, when you look at slow motion video and you see all this damn chaos, dice flipping and flopping and yawing, it's no other, it, there's no other explanation besides the uh, fact that uh, when you see successful dice tosses, it's just because of the correct amount of energy that was applied. Once again, it can be intentional or unintentional. It can be intentional where the practice shooter is intentionally trying to do it, or it can be unintentionally where the winger flinger just picking them up, he's slinging them down there, he go on a 50 roll hand. That winger flinger had to do something to get lucky. Yes, it is lucky, but guess what? You got to do something to get lucky. <laughs> Yeah, you got to apply the correct force, the correct velocity, the correct everything, the correct amount of energy in order to get lucky. I've said that a thousand times. I'll say it a zillion more. In order to get a reaction, there has to be an action, in other words. And if you apply the correct action, <laughs> you're going to get a good reaction. That's just what it is. So, All right, so um, 60 pays 84. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two reds, put up the three greens. So now it's at 
a buck and a quarter. It's at 125 and 19 is going in their Rizak. Guess what? They won't get Bizak. And I appreciate the few individuals that did stop by for my test run on the uh, stream yard uh, yesterday. I should say last uh, yesterday evening, uh, Mr. Yo, uh, others that uh, gave it a big thumbs up because I was checking audio and uh, and video and uh, seems to be working properly. So, all right, uh, it pays 84, 90 pays 84. So it's going to be the same thing, guys. We're going to uh, rack. 19 and put up 125 so once again i think uh the few guys that did tune in i understand guys I, it's not going to be popular uh with my live stream videos uh i understand that uh you know some channels are more popular than others but uh for the few uh that do follow me uh that have subscribed uh i'll do my best to entertain you guys during the live videos uh i'll be doing different um uh, different ways to practice the, the strategy shit yet yeah, y'all can go to other channels for that uh in the crap scene and all that i'm just not into that i'm just into the pure mechanics of the toss uh once again the results will vary uh i'm just going to try to show you guys even though i struggle on a daily basis how to be uh mechanically sound uh with your toss technique because to me once again that's all it's about it's about, it's about the uh, grip and release. Grip and release. I, I, you know, harp on that all the time. Grip and release. That's what it's all about. Once the dice leave your hands, if you release to the best of your ability, you've done your job. Numerically speaking, you already know it's going to be what it's going to be when the dice uh, come off that back wall or roll up to the back wall or kiss the back wall or slam the back wall. It's going to be whatever the correct, well, whatever energy that you imparted uh upon release that's what's going to determine if it's a favorable or uh, unfavorable result which is not rocket science uh i think a five-year-old should understand that all right here we go Well, it hopped up on a seven, and it killed us. That's the way it goes sometimes. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Uh, once again, I thank you guys for tuning in. The few that did tune in for the uh, test run on the stream yard last night. And uh, as soon as I get another camera and all that, and, uh, we'll get started on the stream yard. But uh, once again, hey, like, subscribe. Professor Cage is always spinning, winning, always grinning. See you right here next time at the cage. Thanks for watching.